Good morning. I hope your weekend has been as delightful as mine. Uh, last Mother's Day was spent with my all three of my children at Myrtle Beach, and we just had a delightful time. I haven't been that lazy in many, many years. I uh, want to share a lesson with you today, and let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Lord, please remember those on our prayer list. Amen. Our scripture today is Luke 9, 28 through 36. About eight days after Jesus said these things, he took Peter, John, and James and went up on a mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes flashed white like lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, were talking with him. They were clothed with the heavenly splendor and spoke about Jesus' departure, which he would achieve in Jerusalem. Peter and those with him were almost overcome by sleep, but they managed to stay awake and saw his glory as well as the two men with him. As they were about to leave Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it's good that we're here. We could we should construct three shrines, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But he didn't know what he was saying. Peter was still speaking when a cloud overshadowed them. As they entered the cloud, they were overcome with awe. Then a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. Even as the voice spoke, Jesus was found alone. They were speechless and at the time told no one what they had seen. Our key verse here is, then a voice from the cloud said, this is my son, my chosen one, listen to him. And the title of our lesson today is Jesus Transformed. And the purpose of the lesson is to explore what the transfiguration teaches us about God and Jesus Christ. It was this pivotal act in the life of Christ that signaled an identification and an announcement that God had once again been revealed to humankind. Salvation and redemption would indeed come into the lives of God's people. The events that the, witness, the disciples witnessed on the mountain with Jesus in this scripture uh, that I just read is traditionally referred to by the church as transfiguration, which is a word which is not found in the Bible. The definition of this word is a complete change of form or appearance into a more beautiful or spiritual state. This is what the disciples saw. It happened like this. Jesus had asked the disciples to go with him in to the uh, mountains to pray. We remember several instances that Jesus went into the mountains, and it may have been because that was the topographical, uh, the ge geographical photography. <laughs> I have my tongue tied the geographical topography of the area, but I believe that Jesus had a fondness for the particular setting. Perhaps it was the isolation or the quietness or the fact it was elevated and near to God. I think also it was away from the crowds who were usually near him. We were not surprised that as Jesus prayed, the disciples became sleepy, bringing us to believe that it was late in the day. I had a question come to mind of why the disciples were not praying, too. On another occasion in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus asked them to join him to pray. Then Jesus went a little distance away from them 
and when he returned, he found them asleep. He rebuked them on this occasion and told them to get up and pray to keep out temptation. However, on this last instance, he did, they did not sleep and missed the important event that, that happened. Peter, James, and John may have seen this occasion as just another time of Jesus' prayer. Then the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes flashed like lightning. And then they saw two men talking with Jesus. The men were Moses and Elijah, who were also clothed in dazzling and heavenly splendor. They spoke about God's plan of redemption. Just as Moses led Israel from bondage, Jesus' death and resurrection would deliver the world from the bondage of sin and death. Dear Peter now suggests that they construct three booths or shrines. Peter's idea seems to be a desire to show gratitude and thanks to God <clears throat> for the incoming blessing that has been promised to us through Christ. Luke 9.33 says he didn't know what he was saying, which does not suggest that Peter was rude or arrogant, but simply had not fully grasped the reality and significance of the mountaintop experience. The glory of the mountain would not be completed without the reality of the valley. Jesus' identity and deity as the Son of God was announced and made public before heaven and earth. This echoes and compounds the angelic decree that, that Christ child, decreed that the Christ child had not only already entered into the world, but that his sovereignty as Lord and Savior had now been, endo been endorsed in heaven. God declared that Jesus is my son and my chosen one. The second part of the decree was listen to him. This command calls for an intentional act on the part of the hearer. The disciples would not only be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Jesus said to the disciples who were grumbling and somewhat doubtful, the words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. It is through hearing and believing these words of life that we move out of darkness into God's marvelous light. The disciples' quiet deme demeanor, they were speechless, indicated they, they, like Mary, were pondering these things in their hearts. This reflection would ultimately help them see God's plan of salvation for the world. God spoke when Jesus, Moses, and Elijah and the disciples had been overshadowed by a cloud. The heavenly voice declared that Jesus was God's son and called upon them to listen to him. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for our, your gifts of salvation and eternal life. Help us to remain alert so that we do not miss opportunities to be the holy and ordinary. Help us to listen for your voice. Thank you for your faithful presence with us every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our scripture next week is Daniel 7, 10 through 14. And the background scripture for that begins at chapter 7, 10, verse 9, 10 through 28. Have a good week.